All right, we are officially live. How are you doing, Holly? I'm doing great, girl. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. You are my first uh, business in the spotlight. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself real quick for that we know who you are. Absolutely. And first of all, Kristen, just thank you again so much for doing this, um, for getting all of us small business owners together for these once a week interviews. I think it's such a great idea. Um, but everybody out there, my name is Holly Fraley, and I specialize in individual, family, and small business uh, health insurance policies. They are customizable. Um, I know a lot of people out there are super concerned about their coverage right now with the job market kind of going downhill and coverage ending for a lot of people. Um, it doesn't mean you're without options. And so that's something that I love chatting with people out, working through with them um, and helping them find a plan for. So that's the, the short tidbit about me. I am a mother of two. I have a five month old at home as well as a three year old. So you might hear wow, some banging busy. on the door here in a minute <laughs> as one refuses to go down for a nap. But, you know, we're all in the same boat, making the best out of it that we can. So that's right. That's right. And I guess I'll go ahead and introduce myself, seeing how um you may have people on here who don't know me. Yeah. I am Kristen Gunderson with Gunderson's Bookkeeping. And oh, we do bookkeeping. We do income tax. I even do QuickBooks online training. Like I'll do it for free on my, my Facebook page, uh, the, the Gunderson's Bookkeeping page. And we specialize in profit first. Um, as business owners, we work, we work way too hard, way too many hours, and some of us aren't even getting paid. So, I, and, Or say they have a great year and they spend it all and then they don't have money left over for when they owe taxes. So I help solve all those problems for people. I, I give small businesses a roadmap on how to be taking their profit first, how to make sure that they're getting paid as the owner, because not everyone is financially independent to be able to work for free, and how to save for taxes without even noticing it. And then in the same time, we will be um, helping you figure out how to reduce your expenses or in increase your income if there is nowhere to slim the, prop the expense line. So, all right, well, um, you know, one thing that you just mentioned is you just mentioned people losing their jobs, um, going on unemployment and stuff like that. So that is probably a huge concern right now for people. So let's jump into that. What is something that you would recommend for people who are getting laid off and um, who have health and coverage right now, but they're they may be losing it? Right. So for a lot of people who if they work for a larger company that has 50 or more employees, they should be offered COBRA. Now, COBRA for some is is very, very expensive because the company is no longer yeah. covering a portion of that. So for some, that's a great option. For others, it's kind of unattainable. So the first thing I would want to do is kind of review with them any health considerations that they might need to be considering as far as a health plan, because they want to make sure that they are getting a continuance of care, not only that they would be approved on the policy, but that they would be able to continue their treatments as usual if they're in the middle of some. And that's a big deal for a lot of people. Um, in fact, I'm working with a, a woman right now who is getting cancer treatments um, and her, they lost their coverage completely, can't get oh, COBRA. Wow. Um, there's a lot going on with that. Um, and one of the things I'm suggesting for them, obviously I wouldn't be able to help them with a fully underwritten health policy, but you know, the, the uh, healthcare.gov is still operational just because it's no longer open enrollment. If someone loses their coverage, um, that is a qualifying event. And so they then would have the ability to go on to the Affordable Care Act or healthcare.gov website um, and look for some policies that might meet their needs. And every policy is different. So it's really important that they understand any exclusions or limitations um, so that that plan can keep them then covered. Uh, another option is to look at something short term. I don't typically recommend them um, just because there are a lot of uh, pitfalls. Number one being they're not readily accepted at most places, meaning they're out of pocket 100% if they're considered out of network. Uh, but again, it's about doing research. Where do people live? Where's the closest hospital? What what do those hospitals take for coverage? What are your needs uh, healthy, health-wise, financially-wise? And so there's a lot of factors to consider when picking a health plan. There's no one unicorn policy for everybody. Everybody's needs are different. So it's important to evaluate those um, and take a look at what's in the market. The private sector does have a lot of options, but they tend to be a little bit more limiting if 
someone does have some major pre-existing conditions, such as cancer, such as a pending surgery, maybe diabetes or something like that. Uh, but they're not without options. And so I don't want people to let fear drive any decisions that they're in the needing to make right now, especially with the bill come that's being put out. There are provisions in place for people who are in similar situations, losing their coverage, needing unemployment, needing health insurance, those types of things. So a lot of that is still fairly new and I'm doing a lot of research and learning about what's being provided or what's going to be coming down the pipeline for those things. But the, no one is going to be without options. That I do know. Okay, awesome. Um, you know, one thing that you mentioned was pre-existing um, whatever you call it, they have pre-existing conditions. Sure. Yeah. And um, I know the other day in our <laughs> hour-long um, practice, yeah. you mentioned um, something about pre-existing pre conditions and how um, they may not get covered for them. Yeah. And I was really questioned, uh, you know, thinking about that because I'm like, hang on, I thought there was something out there about pre-existing conditions and how we have to be, have to, like, we should be able to get insurance for that still. Yeah, that that's a huge misconception for a lot of people because when Obamacare came out in 2014, they said, you know, pre-existing conditions don't matter. Everybody's guaranteed a health plan. And that only is relevant for healthcare.gov plans. Yes, anybody mm -hmm. can get them, but you have to be very selective in choosing your plan because just because you get on that policy doesn't mean that it's going to cover that pre-existing condition. Right. Whereas in plans that I deal with, I couldn't write a policy for someone that has a pre-existing condition. So that that notion that pre-existing conditions don't matter is not relevant in the private sector. And even though you can qualify, you, may, you would be able to get a plan with the with healthcare.gov, for example, it may not cover it. So pre-existing conditions always matter. They always matter, whether it's in obtaining a policy or trying to utilize a policy. Um, Short-term plans also don't cover pre-existing conditions. Um, um, MediShare, you know, it's it's hard to find one that does. But but there is um, there are options out there. It's just knowing what to look for when selecting a health plan, whether it's in the private or public sector. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. What do you say for? Because I know there's a lot of people out there who, who still do not even have healthcare coverage. Like. Yeah. What would you kind of recommend or what would you talk to them about for someone who can't even afford health care right now? Or yeah, don't that's think a great they can. question. And, and I get that a lot because people are concerned. Obviously, finan finances are a concern. If there's not a whole lot coming in, they recognize the importance of having a health policy. And I always say that something is always better than nothing. Uh, about an hour ago, I helped someone put together a supplemental package that's going to take care of them in the event of a critical illness or an accident-related injury. Um, they have unlimited use of an online um, doctor uh, consultation. Um, so there are different things. Granted, it might not be, you know, the most Cadillac type of policy, but something is always going to be better than nothing. So, um, you know, I would recommend doing something more supplemental. And even if that is out of the question, I would try to talk to them about coming up with a plan. Let's find a doctor or hospital near you, wherever that is. And I help people nationally uh, because I'm licensed in multiple states and every state is different with their laws and bylaws and whatnot. But um, coming up with a plan because you can always pre-negotiate a cash price that oftentimes can be cheaper than what you would end up out of pocket even if you had a health plan. So um, I would come up with a plan. If you got sick today, who would you call? Does that doctor or hospital know that you would call them? Are you a patient there? Let's establish a relationship with them on a cash pay basis. And then, you know, that once that has been created, they're able to go there, come up with either a cash pay price or a pre-negotiated rate. Um, and then subsequent payments if there's a, a major um, surgery or, or, or need of some kind. So um, pre-planning, just like taking care of your, um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Friday brain. Um, <laughs> you know, they talk about um, uh, preventative, right? Yeah. It's kind of like preventative medicine. If you're going in for your regular exams to stay healthy, that's going to keep you from getting really, really sick. If you're being prevented or you know taking those extra steps initially, even without a health plan to have uh, something in place for when something does happen, 
is always is always going to benefit you more in the long run. Um, I help people all the time who don't have coverage also with, do you need a prescription? I can show you several places to go to get that cheap, if not free. If you need any type of radiology, there are, people don't even know, there's so many places you can go to. Let's say a, a typical CAT scan ranges anywhere from $1,200 to $2,500, right? They are expensive. I can tell you where to go near you and it doesn't matter where you live to get it for $200 or $250. Um, and that's that's cash price. And that's less than what most people would have to pay to meet their deductible if they had a deductible plan or a co mm -hmm. in some cases or co-insurance. Um, so there's a ton of things out there. You know, if you are have breast cancer in your family and you feel you need to get a mammogram every year, those can be expensive. But so many places every year, especially during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they do them for free. Most awesome. people don't know that. So there's a lot of little tricks that I love sharing with people, especially if they can't afford a health, health plan so that they can sort, sort of take care of, of their health or, or know what to do when the need arises. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, to touch on like two different things that you mentioned. Um, I can't really remember what they are. <laughs> but what one of them is- It's, it's all right, it's normal. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, one of them. Oh, okay. So, okay. I remembered what the second one was. So like we, we dropped our eye coverage and our like, and we just go pay cash. And mm -hmm. to me, it's cheaper paying the copay that we can pay cash with than it is to actually have the eye care coverage. Um, and then the other thing is like my chiropractor, I don't visit him too often, but I know even to go through the typical health coverage that we have insurance, just my copays to him would be more expensive. And plus I'd have to go to this doctor and then this doctor and get this mm -hmm. um, referral. And yeah. they might not even want to send me to the same one I've been going to. But my cash price with, I've worked out with him is actually cheaper than what I know I'd be paying with copays and then plus the copay to get the referral and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So yeah, um, working out those cash payments ahead of time is awesome. And yeah. then the second thing you mentioned is, um, getting that supplemental plan. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you from experience back probably 13, 14 years ago, 13 years ago, um, my husband was a new cadet in the fire school and the Conseco, Conseco people came and it was on a cancer coverage. And um, Aflac came too, I think. And he signed up for the cancer plan, the family plan. And he was thinking, um, you know, firefighters that are at a higher risk of all the chemicals and stuff that they ha are exposed to during fires, that he would be at a higher risk of getting cancer. And all that is true. However, at the time, I was very, very upset because I didn't want to have to pay the $65 a month yeah. that that was coming out of his paycheck. And like I said, you know, we were just newly married. I mean, I had a, a job. It was it was good, but I was making more than he was, and he was only probably making twenty six thousand a year um, as a new fire, you know, cadet. Mm -hmm. And um, but three years ago, when my stepdaughter Anna on her fifteenth birthday got cancer um, in January, I have never been so thankful to have that cancer policy because the very first check that we received was more than enough to cover the um, the out-of-pocket deduction that we had for that year. And just that first week that she was at the hospital, it was like a quarter of a million grand, quarter Easily. of a million dollars Easily. with everything that sh she was going through. So yeah, so that is definitely an option. And even if you don't feel like you can afford it, um, I can tell you from experience, we made it work and it was definitely glad that I had it three years ago when we needed it. Uh, uh, you know, stories like that are devastating and I'm so sorry that you and your family had to go through that. Um, I don't think there's anything more painful to a parent than to watch one of their children to go through something that you can't take away from them. Mm -hmm. But how much peace of mind knowing that you had that cash coming to you so that you could focus on loving your daughter through it. Yeah. Um, and, and people, especially when I was younger, I was invincible. You couldn't tell me otherwise. And I didn't, you know, I would, there comes a point when we have to realize, especially right now, I think it's ever more prevalent 
is the fact that we are extremely volatile as human beings. Sickness happens, illness happens, accidents happen, and we might not be able to afford a whole huge, amazing, cat, you know, Cadillac type health plan that covers everything with no money out of pocket. I mean, that's almost unattainable for, for most people, especially if you have a family. Mm -hmm. um, but having something to sort of close that gap on your out-of-pocket coverage is essential um, because things do happen. They will happen. That's just part of life. Um, yeah, it's a win. It's going to yeah. happen. Um, we also, you know, my, my husband has been out of work for about a year now. He made the choice to do that, to stay home with our daughter so that I could focus more on helping people with their health coverage. Um, but now we're at a point where there's a real need for him to, to get back to work. And I invested in something similar, a supplemental policy that would complement what we currently had. And I, I can't tell you how many times we've used it. And the MD Live alone, um, you know, if one of us gets sick, we've got a lot of, you know, money coming, um, accident, extra accident coverage. And, and at first I was like, I don't know why I'm spending this money. Wait a minute. Yes, I do. I sell this for a living. <laughs> and it's very like what you just shared that remind me something is always better than nothing. And a lot of the plans that I help people with are modifiable, which is great. But sometimes that's still out of reach. The most, the, the primary determining factor in the cost of health policies in the private sectors is age. Now, in healthcare.gov, the determining factor is your income, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so it's, it's just two very different markets, but they meet two very different needs. And so I think a lot of people get lost and or overwhelmed with the amount of options available in the marketplace. And that's actually how I got involved in doing what I did. I wanted to leave the corporate world. Um, I was sick and tired of being told, you know, I couldn't have a day off because my daughter was sick. To me, that just didn't seem fair. And I... And so I started my venture searching uh, for health coverage and how we would, you know, take care of ourselves. And I did so much research and I had so <laughs> much knowledge. I ended up getting licensed, right? And and awesome. and I felt like I don't need anyone. Nobody else needs to. Why doesn't everybody learn from my mistake? Essentially, right? I made so many. I learned so much. Um, and so yes, I, I do have policies that I'm I'm able to sell and help people out with. But my advice is free. I love talking with people because I feel like I've been there. I can meet a real need as far as knowledge is concerned. And I'm always willing to help people sort of map out what their healthcare journey needs to look like um, if something were to happen today, tomorrow, or five years from now. So uh, it's a huge blessing for me to be able to do what I do and help people, especially now um, when there's not only a real fear health-wise, but also financially. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a puzzle and everybody's puzzle, uh, the end result's gonna look a little bit different. So yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. It's crazy. So what would you tell the small business owner who has, you know, say for me, for instance, I have three employees, full-time employees, three of us. So including me, it's four, three of us have coverage through our husband mm -hmm. and one of us um, does not have coverage at all. Mm -hmm. What can, like the small business owner, say me, for instance, who knows that, um, you know, we, we make payroll every single week, but sometimes I get stressed about it. Like I know for sure I can't afford health and coverage. Um, so what would you recommend for me to be able to help my employees? So there's a couple things I would, I would recommend. Um, one is to let me look at some policies for them and see what the cost is. Um, what a lot of small businesses do um, is they pay for it for their employee, but the employee owns it, right? They can adjust it, make any changes mm -hmm. to it. And then they deduct whether it's 50% of the total cost of the policy or I, you know, whatever it is. So you're covering a portion of it, but if something were to happen or the employee leaves or, or something, they can have make the option, they can have the option to keep that policy and take over payments for it. Okay. Another option is to purchase um, a supplemental thing, which is, I mean, at low end, maybe $80 a month. That's, that's pretty, for most people, $80 a month is nothing compared to keeping a quality employee. And that's something that you can offer. And it, it and it's a whole bunch of extra benefits that, that are um, great, like MD Live and some extra accident coverage and a whole bunch of discounts locally and things like that. And so, or, or even having, I would say, have them reach out to me, let's see if we can come up with a plan for them. Maybe they pay for 100% of it and, 
you would reimburse them through their paycheck. That way, if, you know, there's a whole, there's a lot of different things you can do. But the important thing is, is that you have a resource for your employee to go to. You might not be able to pay 100% of that policy, but you recognize that their health care is very important. Um, and so maybe we have a conversation with that employee um, and then on the financial side of things and see um, what you, maybe it's just a quarter of the policy, or maybe you just give them a contact and say, here's a person you can talk to. Um, I'll pay for $100 worth of your policy a month or none of it. But having that initial contact, having a resource for them um, is also key because it is showing essentially that you do care about their health in the long run um, and whatever that looks like financially for that particular business, whether it's some all or none of that policy, um, I think is still of great value to that employee who has nothing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, can you think of anything else that you want to add? <laughs> you know, something that we said, we talked about briefly during our trial, <laughs> run, our hour long practice last week, yeah. or earlier in the week. Um, we talked very briefly about the, I've seen it on the news. People have been discussing socialized medicine um, mm. coming out of this as, you know, as a result of the, the pandemic. And I, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy over that. I think some people are all for it. A lot of people aren't. And I can't give a, a, an opinion based on my company or anything else. But I do know um, that that is not a place where I would like to see this country to go. I feel like that's a very scary place to be. Um, people's health is at the mercy of somebody else. If something's wrong with me and I need a major surgery, I have to go and request that. And it might be months before they years. Yeah, or years, and I've seen that too before I'm seen. Um, and it's it's just, it's dangerous. I think the concept, I think, is kind of the direction we need to move in as a country. Um, you know, as far as, you know, healthcare should be available to everybody. Somebody who can afford the most expensive plan on the market shouldn't get precedence over someone who can afford nothing. Unfortunately, hospitals do look at it like that. They are not under, by law, they, they only have to stabilize you and send you home. But the guy with the most amazing plan on the planet, he's going to get the full battery of tests to make sure that whatever he has doesn't come back. And I, I don't think that's correct or fair either. Yeah. And um, to touch on that point, too, you got to remember that hospitals aren't nonprofits. They are a business, too. So yeah. they know that some of the people that um, they just get stabilized are not going to pay them. They'll never see a dime of that. So you got to realize they're a business too. And in order for them to pay their doctors and their nurses and their admin staff, I mean, they need to make money too. I mean, yeah. I don't think that yeah. they should be making, you know, tons and tons and tons of profit. Because, um, right. you know, even normal businesses don't make, you know, 20% profit or whatever, you know, but, um, yeah. And my dad, um, he actually came and visited last week and we were kind of talking about it and, you know, he, we have very different, different political, um, views. And he was telling me, you know, that we are the only first world country that doesn't have socialized medicine and, um, how, you know, we, you know, we need to vote for socialized medicine because it's not just for our pocketbook. We need to look at the better good of the country. Yeah. And um, I wasn't really sure how I felt about that because I like being able to get seen by my doctor and I do pay really good money to have insurance. And I don't want the government or any of their rules or whatever to be able to be like, well, you know what, you're 80 years old, maybe you don't need that hip replacement, let's give it to the 50 year old who still has 30 more years of life ahead of them. And, you know, I've heard of people coming down from Canada to be able to get um, certain surgeries and stuff done. But then I've also heard of people in the US going down to Mexico to get liposuction and stuff like that. So that's our choice. And um, you know, this is what this country is made of is being able to make the choices. And if there's something that we want, we work harder to get it. Um, you know, so 
The power yeah. of choice is definitely a God given right. And I feel like every American, you know, has that right to choose. And I, and I, I, I love that. I think that's all American in a lot of ways. I, a very good friend of mine is from Ireland. She's here in the States. Her husband's an American. Um, and she, her whole life, her whole family, they were pretty affluent in that, in the Ireland community. Um, even though they had socialized medicine, they all had alternative policies that they had purchased outside of that. Oh, they okay. could, not everybody could do that. Um, but, before they were able to do that, her father sat and after having a stroke, sat in the emergency room waiting room for 24 hours before his name was called. Wow. He made it, but most people that age would not have survived that kind of wait in a dire circumstance like that. Um, that's just one example. And so I know a lot of people who have lived that kind of lifestyle with socialized medicine. And they, there's just so many holes in it. There's holes in our, what we have to hear too. Yeah, for sure. Then it's fixable, right? Um, I, I think it's going to take some time, obviously. Um, but but having that choice is, I think, a, a huge benefit to Americans as a whole. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I just lost my train of thought again. There was something else I was going to mention. Um, one thing that we talked about during our practice session yeah, yeah. was about the penalty without oh, having yeah. insurance. Yes, thank you. Um, so I wanted to touch a little bit on that because um, during the o Obama administration, they had the, you have to have insurance or we're going to give you a penalty that's on your tax return. And, um, and then the other thing was, is if you are say a lower income or whatever, you could go to the Affordable Care Act website and be able to apply for a grant to be able to get your health care at a reduced cost. So I want to touch on both of those because I think that they're really important and people need to understand them. So where I saw a lot of things where people would go and be like, oh, well, you know what? Um, I'm going to they go onto the ACA website and they were like, I'm going to make $20,000 this year. And it would give, say, a $400 policy would give them $300 off and they were only actually playing $100 until they had their tax return and say they made twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars that up their bracket and say instead of I saw where people had to pay the whole amount back, that whole three hundred dollars a month a month back. So what, thirty six hundred dollars that they had to pay back as a um I don't know the correct word to use for it, but um, they essentially had a credit that they weren't supposed to get, so they had to repay it back. So people who would normally get money back um, didn't, and they ended up owing. So that was one kind of downfall I saw. One, they were, they didn't know how much more money they were making. They didn't go um, update it for that. That credit got taken care of. So they paid for it anyways. The other one was people they decided that not paying for health coverage, paying the penalty on your tax return was cheaper. The first year or so it was, it was only, I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks or whatever. That was too long ago to remember the exact number, but it was based off of either a percentage of what you made. So I think it was like 2% of what you make or a fixed dollar amount. And it was per person in your family. So if it was just a single person, it wasn't too bad, but when you had a family of four that you weren't covering, um, the penalty got pretty high. Yeah. So, yes. So say um, you would have gotten back, I don't know, $1,000. You should have got back $1,000, but then because you did not have health coverage, that's the only thing you didn't have, you had a penalty for the whole year, or even if it was a part of year, it was by the month, um, say they'd end up owing two grand or whatever it is at the end of the year. And um, and even if they ended up owing money in general, say they ended up owing 500 for their taxes and then three grand for their not having health coverage, so it was like $3,500 total, they would get two tax bills, one for 500 of what they owed for the taxes and the other one for like three grand that they owed for the not having the health coverage penalty. So, that still exists. The penalty for not having health coverage still exists. However, when Trump went into office, um, the penalty is now zero. There is still a penalty for not having health coverage, but it's now zero. That doesn't mean that when 
um, someone else comes into the administration that they can up that again. Um, so he was not able to get that penalty taken away. It just happens to be zero right now. And it could come back in the future where it's a percentage or a hundred bucks a month or whatever it is. Um, so just for you know, that could come back that the penalty for not having health care does come back in the future, whether it be next year or in what, five more years. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that actually reminds me of something that you mentioned to me once before is that penalty has become so ingrained. People think, they, oh, I have to get a, a health policy. Um, not every health policy is ACA compliant. You know, exactly. in the private sector, we're not part of the ACA at all. Um, the fear for a lot of people has has been mitigated by the fact that that penalty has been zeroed out. How, and the other thing, too, is people think, oh, I still need to get this special form and send it in with my taxes. Yes. And I think you mentioned it before. Maybe you could speak to that a little bit, too. Yes. So now there's a new thing that came out. Um, I don't know, a few years ago. I guess it's been maybe four or five years ago. There's a 1095A, a 1095B, and a 1095C. So there's three 1095s, and it all says if you had insurance, the 1095A is the only one that we are still using, um, and that is for people who have Affordable Care Act. It basically says what they were paying, um, what their coverage is, and if they have a credit or not. So we still have to put that in for when you do your tax returns. Companies, because it was mandatory for a while, are still using the 1095B and the 1095C. And what they are is one is if, um, and I can't remember which, but one is from your, say your employer stating you do have it, and the other one is from the healthcare cover, the healthcare insurance company or whatever, that says, yes, you do have it. To do your taxes this year and last, we do not need 1095B or C. We just need 1095A, and that's for the Affordable Care Act, and that's if we have to repay back that penalty, or not the penalty, if we have to repay back a credit that you received for being lower income. So. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I, I'm glad I'm that. Thank you for clearing that up. I've got so many customers that say, hey, do you have that form so I can, you don't need that anymore. Yeah, right? and, and you only need that kind of proof if you have an ACA plan, if you have a government plan, if you received a subsidy, right? Yes, yes. So, um, and and I will say that the the plans offered, and it varies by state. What's offered in those states varies greatly because insurance is still state state regulated, even though there's some, um, you know, like the ACA and all that that that's government rules. States are regulating the insurance, so it's going to vary by state anyway. My point is that. Those, a lot of the insurance companies are pull, have pulled out of the healthcare.gov marketplace. So not only are your options limited, your networks are limited. And I can say too that all of the plans offered in Texas on the healthcare.gov marketplace are out of network at the majority of the hospitals here in Texas. MD Anderson, Memorial Hermann, that means you're 100% out of pocket. With the good research, with someone who knows what they're doing, Hey. Um, <laughs> if you have to get one of those, I will help you learn how to use it. But most people are steering away from that. And I think hearing what you're saying, it's it's OK. You're not going to be penalized if you don't get one of those plans that nobody takes anyway. Right. Exactly. So, right now, you're not, you will not be penalized. Right. Right. So that's OK. The other thing that makes me so excited, I'm going to kind of switch gears here for a minute. Okay. Um, and I love hearing you talk about it because it is really exciting. And, and what it does for people, I think, is tremendous is profit first. Okay, so do you remember back, remember back to like your grandma and how grandma would have these envelopes, these cash envelopes when grandpa would get paid, she'd put, you know, some money into the grocery envelope, some money into um, the, the rent or the mortgage, some money into a vacation, some money in, into a clothing envelope. And then when she would go grocery shop and she would have her grocery envelope and she would have to make sure that you know, her groceries didn't go over what was in her envelope. And yep. whenever that money was gone, it was gone. She had to wait till next payday. And some of those envelopes, like the um, the vacation one, I mean, it got saved in for years before they took it and went on a vacation. So the profit first is kind of grandma's envelope system for businesses. And um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Dave Ramsey and the total money makeover, but this is like, 
Um, the total money makeover is like the cash envelope system. People still use it that grandma used to use, but it's for businesses. And I got introduced to Profit First probably three years ago, maybe four now, and we've been using it ever since and we love it. Um, so what it is, is it's a lot of bank accounts. And I know some people are just like, holy cow, I have to pay $8 a uh, checking account that's open, but there's actually a lot of um, like, uh, what is it? Members Choice and Katie. It's a credit union, and some other banks are familiar with Profit First, and they, as long as you tell them that, hey, I'm doing Profit First with this, they'll waive those monthly fees. So, what it is is all the money goes into a bank account called Income Account, okay, and then twice a month. Um, normally about the 10th and the 25th of the month because things are normally due on the 15th and the 1st. So that gives us five days to get on the mail or um, whatever. We move money to a profit account, a tax account, an owner's draw account, or and a operating account. Okay. So, and I work with people to figure out where they've been and figure out which percentages move where. I actually just talked to a lady Monday who is actually a financial um, a finance professional and helping her get her percentages and where she should moving, be moving them. Um, so we put a small percentage. I'm starting her off with, I think, 2% for the profit account, maybe 1%. Um, she's already at 2% for the tax account that she's been saving, so we're moving that up to 3%. Um, like 41% for an owner's draw, and then I think 51% or something like that for operating account. So she has to make sure that she pays all of her operating account, like her telephone bill, her internet, um, rent, utilities, anything that um, insurance, any normal business expense that she would normally pay. She's only looking at 51% of what her total income is now. So we have to make sure that we go in and be like, oh, when's the last time you that you use the subscription? Do you really need to get magazines anymore? Um, hey, do you need to be paying for the Zoom account? Can you get away with the free one that lets you talk for 40 minutes for free? Um, let's make some phone calls to the utilities. I did that three years ago when I started and I was able to reduce my utilities, the same stuff that I'm already using, $100 a month. You know, $100 ain't that much, but that's $1,200 over the year that yeah. Intense goes into recommend. Um, yeah. we, he was one of my guinea pigs. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be starting this profit first. Um, I'd love to have you join me. We just finished his taxes, and it was literally about a, three years ago because um, we just finished his tax return, and he ended up owing 13 to 15 grand in taxes for the second year in a row. And I kept on telling him, we need to start doing estimate quarterly taxes. And he's like, I don't have any money. We started him on this. Not only did we pay off his taxes for the previous year, we actually had him start paying in that second quarter. And that next year, he had the year before paid off. He didn't spend the whole next year paying off the year before his taxes. He had paid in what he was supposed to. And either, I can't remember exactly because, you know, it was a few years ago, but it was the first year that he didn't owe a lot of money and he didn't get back a lot of money. It was within that thousand dollar range wow. either way um, that it didn't kill him for the next year trying to save and pay it off. And he started getting um, that profit account keeps on building at the end of each quarter. We get to take half of it as an award to ourselves as, Hey, we took the risk. We are, you know, taking the economy we're the backbone of the economy, small businesses. You yeah. know, we're employing people. We're taking that risk. Um, so we get to take that as an award, reward for ourselves. And um, and he knew that he could pay himself. It was just amazing. And, you know, the same things happened to me. I mean, um, I just, I love it. It has that peace of mind that I have a huge savings account with the business now in case lean times come up like we're in right now that you know what if I truly do need my profit account to pay payroll for the next month or two instead of having to take out a line of credit like my favorite client that I was talking about that's what he have to he had to use to do um I can use that and I can pay myself back you know so it's having that emergency cushion otherwise you know I'm taking a big quarterly bonus my taxes are paid for yeah and um 
it's just tremendous peace of mind. And I've seen. I, I, would, I think that's amazing. And it kind of goes right in line with what I was just talking about. A little bit of pre-planning. Yes. For so much peace of mind for a future, not just peace of mind, but um, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, what, solid footing. I mean, there's mm -hmm. strength in that. Um, and just a few simple steps. Someone like you who has the knowledge to know where these funds and the percentages need to be allocated so that there can be um, something to fall back on, but also something to move forward with. I think a lot of businesses, myself included, feel sort of paralyzed um, by this financial ceiling, uh, you know, um, there's just so much freedom in that. And it all starts with a very simple conversation that can provide not only peace of mind, but future planning that goes a long, long way. It's, it's yeah. absolutely incredible. Um, the freedom that you're able to provide people with their finances mm -hmm. and gives them the freedom to do what they love. They started yes. that business for a reason. And yep. being able to continue doing that while you handle the things on the back end, sort of telling them, you know, this is where you need to be. This is where we are right now. Here's where we can be two years from now. You hit that goal and you just, it keeps getting better and better and better. It's just yep. amazing. Absolutely exactly. amazing. Exactly. And, you know, and kind of like with you, every single person is different. Yep. Um, you know, say for instance, um, the lady that I talked with on Monday and I got her her, uh, financial her profit percentages to her yesterday and you know um, she's very fortunate working from home right now um, started her business last year already made more this year than she made last year combined um, for the whole year but she's like you know what we have a goal for next year for that my husband is going to be quitting his job and we're both going to be doing this from home mm -hmm. and she's like I personally do not want to get paid this year. We are making it fine without getting paid. But she's like, what I do want my um, owner's draw to go towards would be to pay off the debt that we borrowed last year to get this business going. I want that paid off by the end of this year for that next year my and maybe get that egg cushion set up for that yeah. next year her husband can quit his job too. So, I mean, everything is customizable. I mean, you may Absolutely. want to be building a or buy a building instead of be renting. And you know what, let's get you that, that percentage being saved each, you know, two weeks for that, um, you know, in five years from now, you can pay cash for a brand new building or, you know, a building that you've had your eye on or whatever. And so, yeah, everyone is different. And, yes. um, mm -hmm. you know. And I think too, a lot of us don't sit back and look at where our spending is going. My mom used to make fun of me all the time because I'd be like, oh, it's just a dollar because I used to dollar tree myself to death and make crafts. And <laughs> but you were going to dollar yourself to death. And she's right. I didn't mm -hmm. realize those little teeny amounts, how much they add up. And even that, that taking that money and putting it somewhere else, do I miss my little whirly do's? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I do without so that I can grow more. And I think sometimes it takes someone to step back and look like yourself and say, hey, you know what? Let's let's move things around a little bit, you know? Yeah. That's incredible. Um, and speaking of that dollar, um, I did a lot of professional growth and personal growth, growth last year. And one of them I went to in Houston. It was a two-day weekend event. And it was on money mindset. And um, you talk about dollars. He even had us talking about pennies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, you know, if you don't care about the penny or the dollar, I mean, you're not going to care where the rest of your money's going. And literally, we had we had an exercise where he dropped coins all in. There's I don't know, a hundred of us there all around in this uh, convention center. And he's like, okay, when we had our eyes closed and when he's like when you open up your eyes you need to go find all the money on the ground that you can and so I mean there were some of us we were going reaching for that money those pennies those nickels whatever the heck it was there might have even been a quarter I don't know and we had hands full of them and then there were some people who had nothing in their hands and there were still pennies on the ground that he could see. And he literally walked us through. He's like, so what's up with the people who didn't grab a penny? And they're like, well, I didn't see any around here. So I just figured there was no more to be found. And he's like, 
you better get up off your chair and go find some because they're still on the ground. He's like, if you are of that limited belief that you cannot find the pennies that are still on the ground and you think that there's just all taken up, you have a limited mindset that there's only so much money in the world and you're just grabbing your little bit that you can. You're never going to be well wealthy or rich with that mindset. Um, you need to go work for it and find it. And then he, he even went and told us that he, he has small kids. He's like, even though he's making, I don't know, millions of dollars, very well off, whenever he or his kids are walking in the parking lot and they find a penny, um, I wish I had a penny right here. Let's pretend this paper clip's a penny. They would pick it up and find it and be like, Thank you, God, or the universe, whatever you want to. Thank you, God, for this penny. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you so much for showing this to me and for letting me find this. And they would view every single penny as a blessing because the more you find and appreciate the little bits, the more big things will come into your life. And that was just an aha moment like yeah. wow that is such a different because I mean I don't pick up the pennies I mean it's just a penny but it's just like you know what that is a gift from God and if you can do well with the little bit he'll bring more to you so um yeah I love that I share that that was nothing rehearsed from our hour-long practice but um <laughs> It's so true. It's so practical. It's it's taking the effort, making that concerted effort to reach out for a seemingly small thing. And you continue reaching out and, and keep practicing that behavior. Those things that you've been just absentmindedly doing will grow and grow and grow. And your effort and your strength will become more and more and more. And, you know, that's it's being a good steward of the talents that you've been, you know, been given. I think what's yeah, really exactly. about, what I can't remember. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this is actually 15 minutes early. Was there anything that we talked about last time that we didn't talk about this time or anything that you want to talk about? Golly, that's a great question. And I feel like we talked about so much stuff. It's so hard to repeat that. <laughs> um, but even still, this is just so much great information. You know, anybody who's out there, if you're curious, if your finances are in the right spot, if your checks and balances are, are where they need to be, I would highly encourage you to reach out to Kristen. She's Thank She you. is so great at understanding people, what their needs are, where, they, where they're at, how to fix that, how to move forward from that. I can't tell you how much great advice she's given me, help, not only me personally, but also with my business. Um, you can't go wrong. And Kristen's just, the, I can't thank you enough for being that um, for so many of us out there as small business owner, owners and those of us that have families that are you know, needing that kind of outlet. And um, and I would encourage all of you guys too to take a minute and evaluate your health policies and see if that's where you need sure. to be. Um, I, like I said, I do this because I love it. Um, so that means if I can help you improve your situation um, with your health coverage, then I would love to be the one to do that. Even if it's not with me, let's just start that conversation. If you don't have a, a health policy, Let's start that conversation too. Maybe maybe it's not how can you get one. Maybe it's what's the plan if something happens and you don't have one. You know, Kristen and I have said throughout this entire conversation that it's all about having a plan. Um, so let's figure out what that is with your health insurance, with your finances. They go hand in hand in a lot of ways. Um, so exactly. you know, let us let us help you. This is what we do. This is what we love to do. It's what we've dedicated our lives to doing. Um, and so you know, please use this as an opportunity um, to just reach out. Yeah. We're not going to turn and, you away. We're not going to laugh at you. Promise. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Holly, you do a free, let's plan it out. I mean, yes. it, it's yep. free to talk to you. It's free to talk to me. Um, obviously, I can't give away my bookkeeping services for free, but I do the profit first yeah. uh, assessment for free. And just having that initial conversation with you, um, 30 minute conversation, uh, that's all free. So there's so much peace yeah. of mind that comes from having a, a plan. So just start that conversation. Um, and what comes out of that is going to be determined by your goals and where you're at right now. So let's figure it exactly. out. Yeah. All right. Well, this was a really great hour. Thank you so much, Holly, Thank for you. your time. Um, and yeah, this was awesome. And I, and I look forward to the next ones. Um, next week, I cannot remember the exact time or 
whatever, but stay looking for it. I am going to be interviewing kind of um, the next business in the spotlight will be Ricky Chavez, and he's going to talk about what you need to do if you're interested in buying a home, like the steps to get to home buying. And I talked with him earlier this week, and he's just amazing too. Um, just in the resources that he has of um, being able to help people to like get to the spot of being able to buy a home because mm -hmm. there's so many people who make really great money have really bad credit scores or no credit scores and what to do in that type of situation mm -hmm. we talked about that so that was really awesome and then the week after that i'm going to be doing two one of them is a, a payroll rep um her name is corey and she's she's my payroll rep and for basically almost all of my clients or 99 percent of them um and what to do during this time um like do you have to pay your employees when do you have to pay your employees when like hey i might need to be shutting down what should i do um you know those different steps what resources are available to small business owners um and then i'm also going to be talking to um a lady who does it's called first step divorce solutions and she really works with um you know a lot of times when people are getting divorced okay females are getting divorced um all they care about is the kids i just want to make sure my kids i have my kids i get a uh, child support but they don't look any beyond that like they don't know if their husband's hiding any money they don't know what their life would actually look like if they were to get this amount of child support a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Um, and she literally sits there in your hand as you're going through that. And instead of having that conversation a year down the road after it's all said and done and having those hard conversations of this is what your life looks like and I'm sorry, like you're gonna have to sell the house or something. Yeah. Um, and she, I'm just like, that is amazing. Um, like, I really feel like, you know, I don't, um, you know, promote getting divorced or anything, but I really think that that is, she has a really great niche that I never even knew existed for people who are going through that hard situation. Um, and yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I that's a soft spot for me too. I, I see, I've seen it personally firsthand in my family and also historically how females in particular really struggle financially for the majority of the rest of their lives after, mm -hmm. course, even if there's child support and different things involved. And um, I think I'm not, a, I don't endorse or promote, you know, divorce either, but sometimes it's just the best answer or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, but I think, I think that's going to be a powerful, powerful interview. And I'm going to look forward to hearing more about that. Um, that's really, really unique niche. Yes. Um, yes, it truly is. I, like I said, didn't even know that, that was a need mm -hmm. or that it existed. It makes sense yeah. that it's a need, but um had no idea that there was someone here in Houston, Cyprus, that actually, um, and I'm sure she can do remotely stuff too, um, that she's there. And she's actually does the um the forensic accounting side of things to be able to look at your tax returns and see if there's any hidden money coming in and stuff like that that the wife doesn't even know about because a lot yeah. of times um women just get like an allowance or say they do know but they just they don't know what it, their life would look like in the future if they were given you know whatever so yeah so, so yeah. I, I think you know health insurance that kind of legal advice um home buying I encourage you guys, you know, if you're watching this, you probably have our, our Facebook sites, our YouTube sites, reach out. There's so many topics I think that, that people are interested in or might need help with that we're not thinking of, that Kristen's not thinking yeah. of. Please exactly. let us know because um, I know between the two of us and everyone else she's talking to, there's a lot of very closely knit networking um, and we can probably find answers or solutions or do an interview based on the questions or topics you guys might get value out of seeing so sure, let, us know, sure. let us know what we can do or what christine uh, i say we you're the one that's doing all of this i'm jumping on the bandwagon i'm so excited but yeah you guys just let us know let us know what you need so we can help you find a solution awesome all right well we will close it at that thank you so much if this was helpful to you at all go ahead and share this out for that other people can get this and i'm sure that we will be able to download this and be able to share it on facebook or whatever but yeah if you can share this um comment 
um, the more people that we help, that's all we're looking for right yep. now is to, be able to give value and help other people. And thank you all. Have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Yeah. Y'all enjoy. Thank you again. I'll see you soon in person. Right. I hope. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye.